Not seen it yet. Can you smell that from there? No. Hello, and welcome to my new chat show. The concept is simple. We'll be talking as much nonsense as possible with some big names. Fairly big names. <laughs> on today's episode, we have... Right, can I just... Can I have a minute? I just need to brief him on something. Yeah, I know it's live. Yeah, I know it's unprofessional. Yeah, yeah I know it's my last warning. No, I've not been drinking. Just... Yeah, right. Look, <laughs> you might have noticed from the titles yes. that we don't have a theme tune. Okay. Um... It's been a whole thing. Elton John's not responding to my calls. Copyright issues. Restraining okay. order hasn't helped. I understand. I was wondering if a man of your talents yeah. might want to do it. You know, come up with a theme tune for us. I'm sure you. Yeah, sing for us. I, I could try if you want me to. Yeah. Okay. Not, we're not putting you on the spot. No. It's fine. Right. Go on then. Okay. Told you it'd be fine. Um. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. My name's Tom. This is. Joe! Yay! I'm the only guest. There aren't many folk in. So sit back and relax. It's you must be joking. Oh, yes. How's that? Brilliant. Thank you. Right, you know what? Let's just... Let's, that was, that let's was... just stop the show there. I, mean, I think I... Personally, I, mean, like... I feel like I've peaked. <laughs> I, I don't know how far much yeah. you want from me. Right. Excellent. <laughs> so, today... We have the man, the man who is making posh funny. He lives in the Tower of London and he's taken the comedy circuit by storm. It's the Right Honourable Tom Horton. Thank you very much. I'm actually not the Right Honourable. Well, I'm just for the, the purposes I'm just of this the honorable. show. No, 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 there's a real difference. Yeah, I'm the just Member the of honorable. Parliament. Right. Yeah, I don't actually get to advise to the Privy Council. I just get... Who booked him? <laughs> Sorry. If right. you wanted a Right Honourable tenses, person. But... Okay, the Honourable Tom Horton. Thank you. Hello. Hey, um, it really says a lot about you, Tom, that you've come out of your way. You've travelled so far to come on this show. Yeah. Also says quite a lot about your career and where it is now that you are on this show. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> where is it going wrong? Ah, oh, well, it's, it's gone it wrong at several stages of my career, I think, probably. Yep. I've made several bad decisions. But I, I don't think this is a bad decision. I think this is a nice... Thing to be doing. I think the professionalism you've got going on here, the fact that I had to sing the theme tune for you, yep. that it all bodes very well for the future. Mm -hmm. The fact that you got yep. the right honourable and the honourable bit wrong at the start. Yep. I mean, it's all professional. And that is what they're going to put on my autobiography. <laughs> right? Um, right, so in all seriousness, no, I'm happy you to be here. are Thank you. on... Yeah, and it's a pleasure. Thank you very much you for having me. You are on um, tour with Milton Jones I am, yes. at the moment and you've taken time out you were in Buxton at the weekend I was which you weren't the massive massive fan of no I said that off camera we don't need to say it. Is it, I loved Buxton but yeah, yeah so Buxton was brilliant wasn't it actually now that we're actually really live I loved Buxton That's yes not... <laughs> yes <laughs> Buxton was great Buxton it was it was a I'll tell you what the difference is is that sometimes you do these big shows and like you do a Friday Saturday crowd and they're all like Wah! And then on... And th that's the sort of clientele. Like, genuinely, some of them are really... I mean, it's a Milton Jones gig. They're normally quite nice and family-friendly nice. and stuff. Yeah. But then on Sunday, you just get a bit more of a sort of relaxed, oh, Sunday crowd. And what Buxton were, the average age was about, you know, um, 78. Right. And it was in an opera house. And they were very sort of Sunday sedates, but they were lovely. Sort of cucumber sandwich type. Yeah, yeah no crust on these guys. No. Brilliant. Well, you wouldn't expect it, would you? Yeah, You're supporting great... Milton Jones. Like, obviously, that must be an absolute blast. Like... He's wonderful, isn't he? He's amazing. He's such a, it's come at a really nice time for me in my career as well. I was sort of, um, it's given me a real, like five days a week, I'm playing these massive big 1,000 to 2,500 mm -hmm. seaters. Getting to watch him perform. Yeah. Because he's obviously. Tickets. Sorry? Free tickets. Free, Free tickets for me, yeah. I mean, I've seen the same show multiple times now. But it's always quite funny watching the same show in different audiences because you can just see where, what parts of the country laugh at what bits and right, what audiences. Okay. Yeah. Like there'll be some gags that sort of get a groan in some places and then they get a round of applause in others. Okay. So it's quite interesting to sit in the audience and watch. And just just being around him, like he's helping, you know, I'm running bits by him and he's very good. He's a great joke writer as well. Mm. And, you know, I, and dare I say a friend. No. Aww. Yeah. Oh, how soft. And lovely. It was nice, yeah, um, it's nice. Well, it's him, me and our tour manager Giles, just in a van. 
So it's a lot of... Yeah, it's a lot of bonding. A lot of bonding. A lot of bonding. A lot of bonding, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you said that in some places certain jokes bomb, in other places they do really well. What do you expect of the northern gigs? You're coming in Salford, it's to, no, you're coming to Salford. My, my tour comes to Salford, yeah. Um, also Milton Jones's comes on the 21st of March, I think. It's next week, isn't it? It's yeah, next yeah. week, yeah. Well, it's because you promised me free tickets, I remember. Did I, yes, of course I did. Yeah, yeah. And for anyone who thinks that I'm lying, or thinks that Tom actually hasn't offered that, I will tweet a picture out of me backstage with Tom and Milton, just to prove that he's not making it up. It's Which, all true. It's yeah, all true. It's all fantastically true. So not, it's I, I, mean, I, I get paid a set fee for the support act, so it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yes, the yeah. so it's Milton's generosity, really. Yeah, your, exactly. Your... So thank you, Milton. Thank you, Milton. Yeah. Um, so let's jump in yeah. and talk about you becoming a comic. So for Ooh. those of you who don't know at home, Tom, as I said in the introduction, you live in the Tower of London. I do. Your dad was the head of the British military. Yes. And obviously, you decided to follow a different path. Yeah, so well, like, he's. To be honest, he'd sort of completed that game. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. he'd got to the very... Yeah. And I don't mean just complete... I don't just mean story mode. I mean, like, he got like, every side mission, All every outfit, every... Yeah. Like, he'd done the whole thing. And so, there was... If I had joined the military, I just... There's no possible way I'd have got yeah. even close to it. Yeah. So I decided to become a clown. So what age did you decide to become a disappointment? Was it early <laughs> on or was it...? Uh, I've, well, I've, um, I've been a disappointment for... Um, uh, oh, so it's as I can remember. Um, it's always quite a funny one because, like, doing comedy, um, my dad was really unsure about it because a military life is so regimented, literally. And you know, the sort of salary hierarchy system you're that rank, you're that rank, you're that rank. Mm. You're that rank. So when it's like, what, you're going to tell jokes for a living and you haven't got a, a, a salary? You just get paid hand yeah. to mouth. He's like, so what's your monthly income going to be? It's like, no, Dad, some months I might get not very much and some might, yeah. I might get loads. So <clears throat> it really, he really struggled to sort of compute just why that was the good idea. Mm. But now I've managed to monetize it and I'm making a good living. Then yeah. Now he's like, now he absolutely loves it. You're a genius. Now You're he's like, now he brings all his mates from the House of Lords to my gigs. <laughs> I've had hey. beef eaters turn up at my shows. <laughs> not in uniform, sadly. The vodka bottles. Gin bottles. Oh, the gin. Yeah, gin. It is gin. Beef is gin. Yeah, yeah, not vodka. Actual alcoholic. I'm just a <laughs> pretender. Um, right, because you said that like you haven't got that military succession. Where where would you rank now in the stand-up comedy world? What, what if I was an yeah, army officer? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, let's say that commissioned officers, the officers are sort of the pros. Yeah. And then non-commissioned are, are, the, are the open spots. I like. I'd say I'm sort of. So if it's captain, major, and sergeant are the first three, I'd say I'm sort of I'm I'm sort of reaching sergeant. I'm sergeant nice. level, I reckon. Nice. I'm getting to sort of where the lieutenant colonel. That'd be the I think that'd be the nice yeah. next break. Good. So for anyone who's tuning in, welcome back to military talk with Tom Horton. I've never thought uh, of it like that, but that's actually quite. <laughs> good. I've always had an ambition that one day I'll have more social media followers than there were members of the armed forces at the time my dad was in charge. Yeah, because then you that, can that go to me in is the say, same thing. Look, more no, people are following me, better. Dad. You're, you're in a position of more authority. I, I, think, I doubt. I doubt my followers would actually follow me into battle, but but let's not. Yeah, let's, let's not. It's getting let's a bit too military that. now. Um, <laughs> right. So, my one thing I want to clarify mm -hmm. early on: most stand-up comics say that in order to do the job, you have to be sort of fundamentally messed up. Right. You were born wealthy, you are really well educated, and if no, you don't mind me saying, you're good looking. So, what's wrong with you? I don't know why I would mind you saying that, thank you very much. It's yeah. Subjective, of course. Um, I don't think, I don't, <laughs> I don't think I was, I wasn't born wealthy. Uh, my parents were, like the military, I mean, I guess that depends what you consider wealthy. Yeah. But definitely my, when, when I was born, I was, I'm still poor as well, you realise. <laughs> yeah. Until my parents die, yeah. then I'll be yeah. Right, yeah. Um, it's like It's like that horrible combination of being famous and poor. It's like you've got oh, the posh accent. Perceived but you're to be also poor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, so man, you, you get all the negative pounds, stereotypes, like, yeah. but you actually are um, um, poor. Well, I think, I think everyone's messed up, though, aren't they? Rather than just comedians. Getting deep. No, I think yeah, so. No, yeah, true. I do think so. Yeah. I think the only sane people you ever meet are the people you've just met. <laughs> then you get to know them well, and you go, oh, no, I mean, you're actually you're nuts, yeah. nuts as well. I mean, we only met about a week ago. 
Yeah, right. And I don't think that holds true. No. Well, yeah. we're only starting to get to know each other. Yeah. I think, um, I think people get freaked out by the idea of public speaking. That's like maybe mm. the, the biggest fear of people in general. Yeah. And then with comedy, you're going for a very specific reaction mm. and one that it's, um, you know, it's, it's, humor's not like two plus two is four maths. It's, it's subjective. Yeah. So it's definitely petrifying. Um, I just, I, I wanted to be a performer and an actor when I was growing up, when I was doing like Cats the Musical on the stairs and stuff. And then just gradually I, I realized that I felt happiest when I was getting um, laughter back. Cause like the thing about comedy is unlike a theater piece, you do the whole play and people sort of sit there silently and you don't know how they've found it. Whereas comedy you're reviewed yeah. every seven seconds. Has that not happened at a few of your gigs anyway? Oh, with the silence? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it, yeah of course it has. What's going on, what's going yeah. on? Yeah, it was all right. Yeah, many yeah. of the ones where my family come to watch. <laughs> it always they, happens. Whenever you've got family in, you, they'll always be your worst game. But do they, are they, you said that you took a while to convince your dad that it was a good idea. Do they laugh at your comedy? Do they find it funny? They do now. <laughs> at the start, though, they weren't. They were just sat there with a real judgy, you know the judgy chin look where the chin goes in? Yeah. And they're looking like, <laughs> don't embarrass us, don't say something bad. And then, but now they've got, now yeah. they've got confidence that I'm okay. Yeah. How comfortable are you on stage and like sharing family stories? Like if you if you something that you say that embarrasses my parents your would parents, say, my parents would say I'm I'm too confident, right? And I should probably rein it in a bit, right? Okay. But I definitely my my uh, my comedy comes from sharing the truth and saying what yeah. my experience is. Yeah. I'm not you know it's you get different types of comedy. Like Milton, for example, you know that's that's very just escapism and stupid and yeah. fun. You go there just to forget about the outside world. Yeah. Have ridiculous uh, silly jokes. It's all really fun. Mm. Whereas mine is sort of social commentary but then also putting my angle on it so it's very much more i'm, I'm sharing a bit of me yeah absolutely um I like, yeah that's what that's just what i i like talking about myself yeah i think it's what it is yeah good um so let's talk a little bit about that upbringing then obviously you've got your new podcast which yes. has been going on now how many episodes in eight or nine uh nine nine yeah uh, <laughs> Could be. Anything. Nine, let's I mean, say nine. I was supposed to do research, but about nine, <laughs> yeah. Um, and you actually did the show, so. I did, yeah. yeah nine ish. Nine ish. Let's say. Um, which is called Class Dismissed. Yes. Basically, the principle is that you invite a guest in and they talk about their school. So you're yes. stuck in detention. We're in detention with the guest, at their school. And they're sort of giving you an expose on what it was like. Yeah. I did a show school. last year in Edinburgh called That's What I Go to School For. Yeah, yeah. Named after the busted, uh, busted track. Yeah. If you all know, cool. then um, yes, thank you. And then yeah. um, basically, I realised there's a real, so, there's a real, massive big um, spectrum of school experience in the mm. UK, and um, I wanted to hone in on that. People like nostalgia. People like thinking back to old school times. So getting guests on and just listening to the variety of different experience people had, mm. it's really fun. It's really fun. People, kids are mental. <laughs> Yeah. Kids are insane. Yeah. And whether or not you're state school or public school or home school or religious school, like everything's, there's so many weird, quirky mm. bits in it. So yeah. It's, yeah, no, it's a really fun podcast. And the, the guests have always, they've always finished it going, that was like a therapy session. <laughs> Just getting all their old school <laughs> yeah. skeletons Does anyone out really closet. enjoy school, do you think? Does anyone really sort of like, oh, what a yeah, fabulous people experience. Really do. Like, yeah, I think people really yeah. do. Um, some people do, like, there are definitely there's a lot of people, not, not, often not comedians. Comedians, I, I actually find, are more sort of floaters, who they sort of are a, a floater of someone who sort of goes through all different social yeah. groups. I, I was thinking of poo. Yes, of course yeah. you uh, But, um, yeah, they're either sort of slightly bullied or just sort of, they stand a bit back, a bit lone wolfy, and just go around the different yeah. friendship groups, which makes sense, I guess. Um, a lot of the people who really enjoy school are the people who then peak at school. Yeah, yeah. Who then don't... Yeah. Don't the do sort of person you look up on Facebook ten years later and go, yeah, what right, yeah, exactly, like, yeah, 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 that sort of person. Um, yeah. But of course, some people like school. Some people, yeah, some people. Uh, my grandma, you know, my parents always used to go, "Best years of your life, school, best years of your life." I think I sort of feel that's a bit tragic. Yeah, hopefully not. Hopefully not. Yeah, but I hope they should be really good years, but not the best years. Yeah, there's plenty still to the come. The best years of your life should be sort of late to uh, late twenties to early thirties, where you've got some money. And you could do whatever you want. That's yeah. good. That's their yeah. good years. Yeah. In terms of the podcast, I'd say my favourite episode, and I think it's the one that you probably get asked about the most, mm -hmm. is the Elliot Steele one. 
because yes. obviously you and Elliot together Elliot's my mate, is yeah. brilliant. Um, you're just polar opposites, complete yeah. chalk and cheese. I live in a palace. Um, Elliot supports Crystal Palace. <laughs> yeah, that is quite the, quite the opposition, yeah, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. He sounds like, I don't know if you've ever listened to but he's like a poor Danny Dyer sort of guy. <laughs> like, well, it, it, it's incredible that you still sound posh when you're doing that. Do I? <laughs> <laughs> you still sound posh when you're doing a couple of things. I can't, yeah, I can't. <laughs> That's just me. If I speak too quickly, I sound like Stu Griffin as well. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Um, That's ruined the rest of my question. <laughs> um, but Elliot's, Elliot's so funny. He's got a bit of no filter. And um, he, he always just sees things as a very different angle than I do because we've come from very different backgrounds, but we've also got a real mutual love. And so just him and me, we're, that, that episode's really funny because um, it's like he's talking about going to Croydon and how when loads of sort of asylum seekers came over, he had like 28-year-old blokes <laughs> who were pretending to be 14-year-olds, 16-year-olds who were coming to school with him. And it's insane. And then him and me are starting a new little mini series on on social media that we're we're editing yeah. together, where it's just him and me talking about <coughs> questions asked on the internet. Yeah, and it's just funny because um, yeah, we're just we're very different but very very similar as well. Yeah, and it is good to have that common ground, and I think that's one thing that I enjoyed listening to the various things that you two have done together in particular. Yeah, is that it's not a culture clash. It's really sort of like, hey, look how different we are. Yeah, and let's find that common ground, and and yeah, comedy and think, is born and from and that. And I think you find that human emotion spans the whole thing. You know, yeah. We may not be in the same situation, but we all know what it's like to feel alone, to feel sad, yeah. to win something great, to miss out on something. You know, we've all got those emotions. Yeah, fundamentally it's the just, same. It's just framed in a different way. Yeah. But, you know, you know, there's more that connects us than, than separates us. Good. And that's cliche number one. So. Yeah, ding, ding, ding. Um, there's one thing that, it's an odd question. Mm -hmm. And... I was wondering, do you think that people from your background are generally funny? I mean, we talked about this a little bit the other day. I like, so I come from Stoke, and when I went to Oxford to do my undergrad, I was sort of very shocked that the whole culture of comedy was very different. Like, I remember people took things a lot more seriously, let's say. Like, I remember very early mm -hmm. on, we had a, a late seminar with our Italian tutor, so he's a really serious bloke. And his, his name was Guido, and yeah, so it was you, got that to about already eight. hilarious. Yeah, exactly. He's already Guido, hilarious, and I'm like, serious I'm going straight in on him. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, but his phone rang, so he'd, he'd organised it till eight, and it later transpired that he forgot to tell his wife that he was going to be home at six. So his phone rang, and he had the look of a man whose wife is ringing him angry, and he went, oh, God, he's going to get up. <laughs> so he answered the phone, and I thought everyone in this room is thinking the exact same thing. It's just a matter of time before one of us does it. So I shouted, Guido! Do you want another pint, mate? Because he <laughs> forgot to tell her, so he was late. Everyone looked at me mortified. Like, how dare you? Oh, mate. Like, that poor man, you could have caused serious ruptures in his marriage. <laughs> what are you on about? That's hilarious. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry you had to go through that, mate. No, it was. It was. Sounds, Oxford was really sounds tough, sounds mentally actually. scarring. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think... I, I think every, anyone from any background... It's got its got its really funny people, it's got its not funny people. Mm. I think you might have just fallen in with a bunch of quite snobby Oxford <laughs> people. Wet lettuces. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Perhaps, but yeah. of course, people from because you know, posh people mm. um, or privileged people, they're, you know, they're not all one type of person. Yeah. You know? yeah. All yeah, yeah. It's like saying yeah. working class people aren't all the same, are they? Of course they're not. We, we are very similar. Well, yeah. yeah no, we are. <laughs> they're not though, because. Um, you get working class people who are who are the funniest people ever, but also yeah. ones that are drastically unfunny. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's just um, self awareness is the key. I think. Definitely. I think definitely. you need to know you need to know how you're perceived by other people, and then um, that's that's I think that goes a long way. Yeah, definitely. But you know, uh, privileged posh people are, are, are hilarious, and there's loads of like. Um, uh, you know, well, Jack Whitehall's the most successful comedian, in, in you know, young comedian in yeah. uh, going, isn't he? So yeah, you're gonna say that with um, maybe not just Jack Whitehall, but a couple of others. It's like, by and large, the demographic of the stand-up comedy circuit is it's fairly dominated by working-class people. Do you get a little bit territorial? Well, I don't think when the working-class comics would say that. Do you not think? No, I think the working-class comics would say absolutely the opposite. I think they go, it's absolutely dominated by straight, white, middle-class men. That's been quite a big issue in comedy. Yeah, it's strange, really, because I think, I think the first people that come to my head, maybe it's just 
the comedy that I like and maybe it's that. It might be that. Yeah. But yeah, I think, yeah. I don't know, there is like a stereotype that working class people are th funnier or maybe like through adversity comes more comedy. But I suppose when you think about it, you're right that there are a lot of... Well, firstly, it's dominated by men. Yeah. Because yeah. that's, I mean, that's sort of, you know, it's the patriarchy and all that stuff, which but, but yeah. it's totally true. If you look back at old, so, all the sort of, Never mind the book. Um, have I got news for you? And mock the week. There's so many men doing them. Yeah. Like yeah. back in the day, it's getting yeah. it's getting a lot better now. And then the um, minorities then also went. There's also loads of white people, isn't it? And mm -hmm. it's like, oh yeah, you're actually you're right. And then um, yeah, no, I think the working class voices has been a big movement for that as well. Um, which which is which is a good thing. Yeah. Because there was a lot of people who also sort of went. Oh, now people who are sort of female or ethnic are getting pushed too quickly when it's actually there are better people. But I think the other argument there is that's it. you have to do that in mm. order to show other people, younger people, that they can achieve it. Their voice yeah, can be definitely. made to do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah no, I, I think um, I think working class people are. I, I think tragedy does help with comedy. Mm. So I think people who have struggled, I think are very, I think there's a lot of humour that comes from that. I think obviously, you know, your whole thing about punching down in comedy. You heard, you heard yeah, this? yeah, yeah. So basically you shouldn't, like, you should never punch down is the idea. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I fully believe that. I think you can punch anyone as long as the intent is yeah. good. But Also, it isn't always a punch, is it? Sometimes it's a pinch and a, a, tickle, a bit of a tickle. Yeah, exactly. Well. I mean, well, because also I need to believe that you can punch down, otherwise the only people I can take the mickey out of are myself <laughs> and the royal family. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, it's all about intent. But if you do go by the whole idea you should only ever punch up, then that just means that working class people or females or mi minorities yeah. or disabled people have more places to punch. So yeah. they have more opportunities to be funny, if that's what your, if that's what your yeah, logic yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Makes, that makes sense. Yeah. Does it, does it, it did make sense, didn't it, it? Does it make sense, everyone? I'm really yeah. regretting not having a studio audience now because that would have been... Forgot, that's all right. Yeah, yeah, I, okay. Yeah. Um, so let, let's talk a little bit about school. So obviously the podcast is based around you asking other people about their school and then you compare it to your experiences. Um, there are a few things that have always puzzled me. I've wanted to know what happens... Because uh, you went to a boarding school, an all-boys boarding school, didn't you? I was boarding from six years six old. Six years old, yeah. Does your dad love you now? Or? No, that, <laughs> no, no, it was that thing. Because, like... Um, uh, yeah, it's either they didn't love me or they just want to get rid of me quick enough so they could convert the conservatory and have swingers parties. Did that? Do you know if that happened? I don't. Well, I wasn't there. Yeah, maybe. Okay. I, I've, yeah. I've only got one yeah. sister. So maybe you were... should raise it with them. Maybe. If, I don't know if I want to know. <laughs> okay, I'll just leave them the boarding school scarring. I don't need. Yeah. The, okay. You I don't need the double pen. scar. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Um, right, okay. Do you know what happened on my first day as well? So, I've been to an open day at six years old, and open days are great, but of course they are because they're open mm. days. They're meant to be great. They're not the same as going to school. Yeah, they're not school. representative. Yeah, going to an open day and going to school is the difference between like, going to Euro Disney and working at Euro Disney. Right, yeah. Um, and so because I've been to the open day, I thought on my first day of boarding school that I was a day child. So when the day ended, six-year-old me went to the school gates and waited for my parents oh. with the other day children. They gradually just got t taken away by their parents one or the other. So I was just left there at the end. Just this sat is, there on my own. This is quickly turning into a sort of Piers Morgan's life stories. Yeah, it is. If you cry, I might win an award. <laughs> I don't know, I can't. I'm, my, <laughs> You're so emotionally that crying stunted. child has been shoved down now, yeah, years. Good, been... good, good. That's oh, what thanks. we want, yeah. Um, um, right, I want to know at your school whether some staple things that happened at my school or my sort of school happened. In, in Stoke? Stoke. I'm from Stoke. Okay. Although I did actually cross the border to go to a school in Cheshire East. Oh, so okay. it was it was slightly better than Stoke yeah, okay. actually, but still. That's he hence why you Stoke. have the cross-legged. That's where you got it from, right? Yep. This is Stoke, Cheshire East. Nice. Yep. Um, do you know what the fifteen-minute rule is? Did you have the fifteen-minute rule at your school? Um, no. Is that something to do with? Um, I don't know. It might be Stoke. If you drop some food. <laughs> that right. <laughs> I mean, it's like the five seconds. Give second it 15 rule. minutes, it'll taste better. <laughs> is that what it is? We have the 15 hour rule. If you find it and it's still sort <laughs> it's of still... not been rained on, we will eat okay. it. Yeah. Um, no, the 15 minute rule was basically <laughs> if you were at the classroom and the teacher didn't arrive, 
you were well within your rights to just leave. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. right. Okay. And I think the rule was mostly written by students. Sure, I don't I think, don't that's think it was part of the school. constitution. Yeah. But I do think that teachers, by and large, sort of accepted it. Did that? Yeah, happen? I thought of we were just like, well, we're not coming. Like, well, if you where can't were show the up on teachers? time. Well, I don't know, like, they were probably breaking up a fight, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> right, so they got cut or confiscating a knife. Because they like running right. a gauntlet through the <laughs> yeah. playground to get to the yeah. thing, and then they got beaten yeah. up. And then... Yeah. So what you do then is just two of the people in the class go and beat up the teacher, and the rest of you go, yeah. oh, they're not here, fine. Yeah, exactly. Stoke, that was, that was actually clause four of the 15-minute rule. Yeah, exactly. Right, what were the other things I thought of? Um, I mean, most of it was based around violence, like digs, birthday digs. Birthday bumps is what we called it. You call them bumps. Yeah, that's, cocaine that's in the cubicle. Cooler. No, no, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, birthday bumps is just like... <laughs> you, what? what, what? Yeah, we, you arms gave them a legs, massive yeah, wedgie. Yeah, arms and legs and you pull them up and down. Or you... you, had, you what was it called? Wait, uh, wait, so what, four people got them by the arms and legs and pulled them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and just... No, did that, I just that hit myself <laughs> in the balls. <laughs> To anybody watching at home who might be a celebrity, come on my show. It's not dangerous. Not unless you've helped, unless you beat yourself up. Yeah. Ow. Right. So. Um, birthday yeah, on bumps. your birthday, you just punch yourself. <laughs> punch in yourself the in the neck. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was the tree of truth. I remember this is where, uh, where, you, had, where you, you grab someone by the legs, and there'd be a hill and a tree at the bottom. You run down, and just smash them into the tree. Right. Okay. That's way worse. That's way worse than anything but I heard. The thing is also like public schools are brutal. All boys public boarding schools. Well, I suppose you've got like tempt up masculinity that you can't take out. Yeah, on, like... yeah, yeah. And there's nothing else to do, and you're all in. Like, and it's late at night, witching out with the, you can't with the lights leave. down. Like we had, um, you can't leave. But also the 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 other pupils could you could give it you, you'd sort of there'd be a sort of um, um, martial law amongst the kids. So I, I got whipped with an outstretched coat hanger on my second day because I called one of the prefects gay. So he, he, Classic he, insult. Like he literally Classic he stripped insult. me naked and outstretched yeah. a wire coat and whipped me across my back. I've still got the scar. Shouldn't laugh at that. You've still got the scar. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is turning into live stories. Does it always have to be the funny of this show, or can I... Cause Let's just... make it really serious and horrible. Yeah, well, that, that was pretty bad. That is pretty bad, actually. Um, I used to... I remember I told you'd be like When that. I was the third form prefect, when I was in the sixth form, so I was 18, they were 13, as the initiation, I, used to, I, got, I took a suit... I stick him in a suitcase. And throw him down Wait, the you, stairs. You, you were doing this. Yeah, oh right, so I don't have any sympathy for you now. No, because what you do is you get you get bullied really badly when you were young. Yeah. So when you got to eighteen and you were the older one, you'd be like, right, punching down. Yeah, yeah. Oh you yeah, punching down. Punching down. Yeah, and you now did. you're making a career out I of it. Yeah, I so. I, I'm, not, I'm not proud of it, but that's, that's definitely so cool. what happened. Yeah, excellent. Uh, what were the other things in state schools? You had like, um, did you did you play that game? Oh, you've lost the game. Is that it? No. If basically, if I do that. Oh, that's I've seen and that. And it's below the, yeah. it's below the waist, and you look at it, then then I just have the right to punch you, and that is the rule. I swear to God, we had a scholarship kid who'd come from like a state school who introduced that. What <laughs> yeah, is this yeah. weird <laughs> game from, from Stoke? Probably Stoke. From, from let's the be Shadow of Lands. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I do remember that game. Yeah, but it's also do you remember the game, the game. You've just lost it. And we've just both you, lost and we it. both yeah, just yeah, lost yeah. it. Yeah. So it's over. And, and so have all of you. Sorry. And you all. Did anyone else lose the game then? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, lost yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. I've got that. Yeah, yeah. So that's the game. Mm -hmm. Yes, we had we had that. We had the, that game. You just lost it. I just lost it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, lost it twice. I, I can't stop losing it now. Put <laughs> <laughs> myself in the God, balls. So unprofessional. Um, what other games did we play? Uh, there were some weird things that happened in the uh, boarding schools. One of which I really want to ask you about. And again, yeah. I'm sure you've been asked about this a lot of times. You know what it is. Yeah, I, I can, I can, I can, I can already it. guess. Is it that? Yeah. Go, well, go on. There might not be. I'm, I'm not allowed to swear on this, am I? Ejaculating on a biscuit. It's called, yeah, soggy biscuit. Soggy biscuit. Soggy biscuit is the. Yeah. Did you well, just lick your lips? Yeah, yeah. There's just <laughs> little, little. Were you just reminiscing? Little flashbacks <laughs> of a jammy dodger I had when I was 12. <laughs> yeah, um, I'd be worried if it was that colour. But I anyway, carry on. I actually didn't um, ever play soggy biscuit. But I also, I was at the age where, firstly, you could, you were mature enough to play. <laughs> God, that's awful. That would be an embarrassing moment, wouldn't it, if you were invited to play, to play Soggy Biscuit well, and, you'd you'd lose, wouldn't you? and you were just playing Dry Biscuit? You'd lose, because you, know you know what the game is, right? Well, do you, is, how would you win? Because I don't feel like anyone wins in that game. You don't win, you just don't lose. Do you know how to play? I, I'm very proud of the fact that I do not know how to play Soggy Biscuit. 
Right. Right. So get, the, get me. The, get me my rich teas. Bring them in. Don't. Don't. Um, what? So I'll explain soggy biscuit. Right. Is this? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Crack on. Okay. Crack on. Crack on is poor choice of words. <laughs> You get a biscuit. Oh, he's going so far down. And you get your friends, and you all go in a circle. Just the one biscuit. One biscuit in the middle. And you all start pleasuring yourselves. And the idea is there's a yeah. race to come on the biscuit. Yeah. Then once you... And then the last person to ejaculate on the biscuit has to eat the biscuit. Right, okay. Yeah. Here endeth the lesson. Can I just point out that my girlfriend is in the gallery right now and she, she just she didn't know what that was at the start. And when you explained it, it was a surprise to her. And she said, but I'm not from England. Look, anyone watching at home, this isn't an English game. It's not it's not something that like Prince Andrew. No, I won't actually, uh -huh. I'm not gonna do it. Well but um. I so I was <laughs> but by the time I got I actually got bullied quite badly at my school. So I didn't so it never got played. I was just never good looking enough or popular enough to ever get invited. I can't imagine a state on the, the social hierarchy yeah. where you are not cool enough to go and ejaculate on a biscuit. Yeah. Okay. I, go, I just walk back <laughs> off to my, my, my bed sit with custard creams and broken dreams. <laughs> Excellent, Thank brilliant. Um, right, I'm and not sure where we can go from there by Tom now. <laughs> so, uh, where can we go? These are the scariest bedtime stories you can imagine. Yeah, there was, yeah. It, but, did, it happened then, that is know, something that they played. If you put a bunch of newly pubed up <laughs> boys that's, that's in the a technical term. Newly pubed yeah. up. <laughs> Sorry, for, stop me if I'm getting too scientific. Did you just go home after the end of a term and go, Hi <laughs> Mum, I'm newly pubed up. <laughs> <laughs> this is what that public school education gets you. Yeah. Uh, um, such a fantastic But of course camp. stuff like that's going to happen. Naturally, obviously. It is. I mean, it's, to it's, be fair, it's, it's the natural conclusion. It's Lord of the Flies, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Can I just ask quickly, what sort of biscuit was used? Because I imagine, like you they said, know, you said... They're invited. You, Stop right. rubbing it in. That I <laughs> I'd love to have known. Right, we're going through but so think, many I think scars. traditionally it's a digestive. Traditionally. Yeah. I was going to say, is... so if you use something really small, the game would be not that functioning. Also, if you use like a rich tea, it'd break after like two loads. Well, let's think about this a lot more. Uh, yeah, let's get really... Let's really... Let, let's, let's spend for that. the majority of the... Uh, I don't know what you'd, what you'd want, no, like a, a jammy dodger is always the one that I think, or like a party ring. <laughs> I suppose with a jammy dodger you could aim for the, the heart in the middle, couldn't you? A, a chocolate finger? <laughs> I, That'd I be quite some aim. The, the female equivalent is just a circle of women taking turns squatting on a Toblerone. <laughs> 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 Your turn, Sarah. Thank you. Do you want me to do it? <laughs> what is <laughs> what has this turned into? I don't know actually. Um, I'm so glad we did My mum always life, always says to me, "Don't be crude and rude on student television." Stuff. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, students. <laughs> there needs to be a trigger warning. Right. About oh, brilliant. Moist confectionery. So. Yeah. Good. Right. I think we'll leave the the school games. Yeah, I had a few more in there, but I think that one trumps them all. Yeah. Um, Am I allowed to drink this or not? Absolutely. Yet? Just cover up the. Mm. No product placement. Can't tell what this is. Right. I've got another game. Oh, yeah, go on then. Do, yes. we, have do we have music for this? Do we have music for my show game? Wait. Right, okay. Do you want me to do a theme tune? Do you want to do a theme tune? <laughs> Jesus, right. Uh, what's the game? Um, hang on. I, um, um, uh, we, we've Shall stopped we st talking about biscuits, which is a bit of a shame, but don't worry, everyone, there's another game. And it's called, golly gosh, I think I might be posh. If I don't win an award for this, I'm going to be absolutely fuming. If you don't I will get you to. If you don't thank me while you're accepting your award. If my career ends after this, can I come on your podcast? Yeah, <laughs> Just yes, to no. reignite it. Of course, it. of course. <laughs> If you need some support at any point. Right. Open, well, yeah, open. golly gosh, I think I might be posh. Right, so I, I reckon the principle of this is a really well thought out game. In okay. that sort of 20 seconds, came out of it. Nice. Um, I'm going to ask you a series of questions. Let's say four, because it's mm -hmm. a nice number. Um, if, you get, if you say yes, that's one point. If you say no, that's zero points. The more points, the more right you have to claim that you are posh. Okay, cool. Yeah. Right, first one. Do you know anybody called Tarquin? Tarquin, um, 
No, I don't know that Tarquin. I've, 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 I've met Tarquins. In what context? Uh, were they were they ejaculating a, on a biscuits? Lo, a lo, I met I met I, I met a Montague. <laughs> right, okay, I think that counts. I met him in Meribel when I was skiing as well. Does that help? A pardon? Isn't that a brand of cheese? That's Baby Bell, baby you moron. Bell. That's, that is Baby Bell, to be fair. What do you expect from Stoke? We couldn't afford cheese. That's my friend. I've, always got, I've got a bit where... Um, so, one of the questions you always get asked in sort of posh circles is, do you ski? <laughs> because do you, they do ski. Do you ski? Do you ski? Because yeah, they, they ski, yeah, yeah. 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 I, had, I had a mate of mine from Blythe. So he's probably like, why I hoi man, hoi man. Like proper Geordie. Yeah. And, uh, that was Geordie, was it? That was Geordie, yeah. <laughs> you know the noises they make in there. Yeah, yeah. And then... Uh, and, <laughs> And then uh, he came down to a house hey, hey. by. He came down to a house by at my house once, and I left him in the conservatory for like. At five. the Tower of London. No, 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 no. This was uh, previously. Yeah. And um, uh, um, and I left him in the conservatory for five minutes. By the time I got back, one of my friends had cornered him and was going, "Do you ski?" <laughs> and I swear to God, the best re best reaction I've ever heard. He went, "I've been sledging." <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> to be fair, I've never associated those two. But Sledgy. actually, I think I am going to count that. Absolute legend. Skiing? Oh, that's poor. That is poor. I told you. You can't call like him that. Sledgend. 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 Mate. Uh, so I, know a I met a Tarquin at a show right. before, I'm sure, and I, I, I've met Montagues. But, um, Let's give you half a point. No Tarquins. That's fine. Yeah. Um, do you have a favourite gilet? <laughs> uh, I, I do. Uh, it's my barber gilet, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Good. Blue. It's blue. Blue gilet. I, I wanted to get a red one, but then you just look like Marty McFly out of Back to the Future, don't you? Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. sing a bit of Chuck Berry. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 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 have you ever been on a gab yard? Yes. Oh, you are boss in this game. And I, yeah, no, and I, I did the whole shebang. I went, to I went to South Africa. Nice. Then I went to, I, I didn't go to Thailand, I went to Singapore. Counts. But still fine. Yeah. But you should really go and see the full moon party. You know, yeah, got it. And smoke weed and really sort of figure it out. Find yourself. Did you find yourself? D <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't. <laughs> I'm quite glad I didn't. Um, <laughs> then I went to Australia and I uh, worked up the Gold Coast. Then I went to New Zealand for a bit. Then I went over. Then I should have done South America, but I didn't. We, me and my mate Tim, we went to um, actual America, North which America. was stupid because we were all 18. And couldn't uh, do we couldn't do anything. Yeah, so you just took a pack of biscuits. We probably, also ran out of money. We ended up, um, we, got, we got a Greyhound bus and we ended up sleeping rough in Houston, Texas. And we got picked up and taken to a drug and alcohol rehab centre. And had to stay Good. the night there. <laughs> it was so bad because we were in like little flip flops and we had like pink and yellow sun vases with m, &M You really looked like on. you belonged We then. looked so yeah. bad. Yeah. And um, it, was, it was like a proper like, it was full of like big gangsters who'd been locked up, or like proper sort of middle-aged white, cold turkey yeah. crackhead. Yeah. It was, oh, And scary. you walked in with And then one email to our parents, suddenly 500 pounds each gets shoved in our bank account. Nice. Greyhound bus straight up to New York and nice. straight back home. They, nice. Yeah. That is how you do a gap year. Gap year. That's the perfect, perfect yeah. gap year. Right, okay. Um, last question. Is that it? Oh. No, one, no, this is the last question. Don't okay. jump ahead. Okay. Have you ever recoiled at the smell of a nearby Greg's. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, I, uh, I like that Greg's. Really cute one. I like Greg's. Yeah, fine then. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah. I've, it, it, it serves a purpose. It does. Um, Food. And then, um, but I, uh, what do I like from Greg's? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> yeah, I, love I like your I love sausage rolls. Yeah, yeah. I tried the vegan sausage roll when it came out. Oh yeah, are, you, are you of that? Vegan? Yeah. Right, so I'll tell you this. Um, I, I went vegan for about 10 days. When, right. Cause, and right, it's for no, because there's loads of reasons to go vegan. And the only reason I did it, it was for no moral reasons, is because I watched a program on Netflix called Game Changers. Yeah, yeah. And in it, they did this experiment where they got some athletes to go vegan for a couple of days. And it said that they got 10% harder erections. And I was like, I'm in. That, I'm going to win the sold. bit. I'm going to win Soggy yeah, Biscuit yeah. now. That is. And it's like, yeah, exactly. Straight away. <laughs> and, yeah, but it was really sad, isn't it? Because it's like, no, Tom, it's real cruelty to animals. Don't care. <laughs> I want a no, massive, No, no, but like the methane erection. they cause could save the planet. Don't care. But, you know, the, all that yeah. money we spend could help so solve world mm. hunger. Don't care. 
10% harder erection. Carrots, carrots, carrots. Straight in there. How did he measure that? Not just 10%. carrots. <laughs> no, just, not no, just no, carrots. The idea was to get a 10% harder erection that I could see in it. the dark. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a glowing penis. Excellent. But as my girlfriend said, when I was like 10 pints in at four, four in the morning, attempting it, to get an... She said, <laughs> Tom, 10% of nothing is still nothing. <laughs> Good. So there's my little power. There's my Good. Little... Yeah. To be fair, I thought about veganism. Like I, I started to go vegetarian, and then I sort of I could feel myself becoming more and more of a flannel with every passing lentil. And I thought, That's like last night, I was I've, I've been doing veggie for a, a while, a few weeks, and then last night the fire alarm went off at home, and I was sitting there with my girlfriend, and we we had the sort of classic British reaction to a fire alarm. I just sort of went. Not happening. I'm not moving. I was eating. I was eating my spicy bean burger, but then I thought, well, Carolina made me rush out because she was like, "Fire!" I was like, "There's not gonna be a fire. Like, no, wow. not happening." Um, but then I just thought, if it was a fire and I did die, my last meal would have been a spicy four bean burger from Aldi. I thought, no, I'm not doing that. I'm moving on. Yeah. So now it's just steaks every night, is it? Steaks every night. Yeah. 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 I think. No, I think uh, there's actually. I, I quite liked it being vegan. It made me cook more and interesting. I did generally felt feel healthy. I think what I just need to do is eat more vegetables and don't eat as much red meat because that's the that's the problem one. Yeah. I eat a lot of fish. Yeah. Fish are good. So fish are fine. Aside, fish don't have eyebrows. It's yeah. Exactly. They don't look human. Yeah. So joking aside, I'm looking. We are joking and laughing around here, but that's serious. So. Something to think about. I mean, yeah. I. Yep. Yes. Good. Um, <laughs> right. So, Tom, I did snuggle up to you earlier. Yes. I'm going to snuggle back up again because I have been trying to be your friend for a good couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, I have been stalking you on Twitter. Uh... And I think that what I can offer you as a friend is far beyond what your audiences can offer you in laughter. Go on. Very funny, very very funny Twitter feed. Also a cry for help. Oh, what, what? And we've got this picture here, which I think as soon as I see this, I think of the words Exhibit A. And I can think there it is. Oh yeah, that's me and my my three best mates. Are they inflatable? They're wood. They're made of wood. So not so they're not for. They're not like a biscuit replacement of any sort. <laughs> no, no, they're not. They're, uh, they are, um, that is three mannequins that I rented out for a photo shoot. Because you didn't have any friends, is that the sort of... Because I didn't have any friends, yeah, yeah exactly. Good thought, yeah. And it was, um, that's me. I got them from the National Theatre Prop Hire place. Yeah, legit. And there's some chair, yeah, yeah. That, I was driving through, um, I drove through the whole of London with three of those guys in my car. Yeah. I've got some very dodgy looks. Yeah. Um, just for those at home who are worried about the safety of wooden mannequins, Tom was very road safety conscious, weren't you? I As was, you can yeah. see from the video that he soon posted after. A few, few of you are questioning my road safety skills. I'm trying to be straight with my hoodie. <laughs> I look like a gnome. It's nearly a gilet, yeah. isn't it? Just to be honest. <laughs> well, that is the definition of a gilet, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Not having because honestly, yeah. when I did that first picture, the amount I, I got so many people going, they're not wearing seatbelts. <laughs> so I felt like I had to, the need to like pull over and put their seatbelts on. Good. I got properly like safety shamed. Yeah. Is that a thing? Maybe. Good. Right. We're going to move on from the, the wooden mannequin thing. I can't think of a decent segue from that because, well, I'm just not very inventive or good at my job. Yeah. So, well, you, so you've got a girlfriend, have you? No. No, uh, I did have a girlfriend. Oh. But I don't think, um, yeah, sad times. I'm single at the moment. <clears throat> I can't even remember where I was going with that. Right, <laughs> yeah, that's it, first dates. So First dates, you actually yes. came to the attention of the British public with your trademark smooth operating lines. On first dates? Yeah. That's me. And this, so do you, talk us through, what was, the, what was the experience like? It was pretty surreal to be honest. 
So I, I, I didn't sign myself up for it. Um, my friend Daniel Sloss and Jean Young, uh, uh, who's also Shut my up. friend, <laughs> um, yeah. uh, they, um, they signed me up in secret. Then just one day I got this phone call going, hey Tom, we've got your application. It's really great. We think we've got the perfect match for you. Do you want to come in and do a proper full audition? And I was like, sorry, who is who this? Who are you? What? What's going on? And they said it was first date. So then I was like, did I, I put it in my WhatsApp group of, of comedian friends. Just going, what's happening? And Sloss was that. like, bah, I can't believe it. Um, Here's a sheet, by the way, Sloss. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, because um, he, he'd actually applied a few people, and I was just the one who got through. Uh, so, of course, then you've got to th go through with it. Oh, yeah, naturally, yeah. And so um, I went through auditions. He kept on going, yeah, 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 yeah. They were perfect. We've got this girl. And so um, it was First Dates Hotel, so it was in France. And um, so I flew out there. And then it's, it's nerve-wracking because, you know, it's like five million people watch it. Um, first dates are quite terrifying anyway. You also realise that you've done an audition and they've recorded you and then a group of people have gone, right, who's about his standard? <laughs> so obviously if... <laughs> you're just going, please, God, don't <laughs> have some mutant with three heads walk through the door. I bet she was thinking the exact same thing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, but then, look, Bella, who's absolutely, she was, she's absolutely wonderful, beautiful, elegant, Bella. hilarious. Mm. She, yeah, she, she's, she's a Bella. Um, and she's like, you know, she was from a, like, her dad owns a bank. Nice. And she's an artist. Nice. And she, like, cats the musical as well. So it was like, as soon as we sort of met, we're like, yeah, okay, we see what's going on yeah. here. This is all good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, no, and then it was lovely. It was really, it was really lovely. It was, it was an amazing experience. Um, stuck a little kiss at the end. That was nice. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then... Um, Naughty. Got to have a nice holiday in France. And I think what we, re what we did, as, as soon as it st we met, we went, right, this is quite a lot of pressure. Mm. Let's just, rather than think of this as a date, let's just have a really fun time. Which is, Which is not a date. No, well, all. it's yeah. essentially, but, but do you know what I mean? Don't put pressure yeah, yeah, on Yeah, no anything. pressure and have a good laugh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, this here is my favourite clip, which is, I'm, gonna, I'm sure you're going to defend this joke. This is Tom being the smoothest person, the smoothest operator you have ever, ever seen. With their date nearing its end, Tom and Bella are enjoying a little nightcap on the terrace. All right, so listen, I'm going to leave you this umbrella. Okay. And when you get tired, you call me. There you go. Okay. Thank you, Fred. It's That's very kind. <laughs> I'm really enjoying this pancake. It's funny you're talking about pancakes because I think you're waffling. <laughs> you see? See the, see, the, see the smile? See the smile? Your, your, your smile. I, yes, I, oh, I find that looks <laughs> hilarious. But look how much, look, look, look <laughs> that. Is the look of a joke landing? That is a. That's the look of somebody wanting to be rescued. <laughs> that is not a joke landing. Yeah, she does sort of <laughs> cling onto that umbrella like she oh, wants to marry Poppins. Yeah, as long as it flies away, like, please. I'm Good. I'm very chuffed with myself. I quite like that joke. <laughs> it was in the yeah. rain as well, so our wine glasses kept on filling up. No. Yeah, that's pretty much just rainwater in there. <laughs> yeah, budget. Yeah. yeah Small budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Um, it was really nice. We realised that we both really like Cats the Musical, so for supper we shared a fish. <laughs> and if you want more well, jokes like this... If anyone wants to go on a date with me... <laughs> damn good. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I also... You, this was edited out, but during the meal, because she said she was really into swimming, and there was a swimming pool just outside, and I, I got a bit drunk, and I was going, it wouldn't be really funny if we just stripped off and went and jumped yeah. in the pool? And she's like... No, we're in a restaurant. And I literally, I, I took my shoes and socks off and under my belt. In preparation. In preparation to strip and jump in the pool. And she's like, no. And thank, thank God they edited that out. But it was really fun. She, she was great. I, I'm wondering who we have to contact to get that clip. Oh, I hope it's for dead. For the next time. I hope it's dead and buried. Yeah, anyway. Um, right, so if you want jokes like that one, pancake related or otherwise, then you are coming to Salford in June, right? June the eleventh, I think. Yes. Is the, at the Lowry. Yes. On your on your your first UK tour. That's exactly yeah. Which yes. must be well exciting. It's very exciting. It's off the back of the Milton one because I think mm. um, just getting a lot of followers off that, which is very nice. And um, the whole strap line is Tom Hort the Honourable Tom Horton is on a tour with yeah. Tom Horton on a tour. Yeah. Wordplay. So it's it's Wordplay. more jokes like the waffle joke, isn't it? Really. It's yeah. still it's not high caliber, but. 
then. But he is really nice, so it's sort of like that, which, you know, yeah. balances. Yeah, so it's sympathy laughs that I'm going for, mainly. <laughs> yeah. Oh! <laughs> yeah. Thanks, mate. Yeah, yeah but good. That, that, please come and bring everyone you've ever met, ever. Unless they're from Stoke, in which case I'd probably... No, I love Stoke. Yeah. Yep. You were in Stoke, weren't you? Not so long I was ago, in Stoke. Actually. You did a gig in Stoke. And you survived it. I met a so. mad woman called Sylvia, who was 87. Sylvia... Um, oh, she's not like your grandma or anything. Sylvia... Oh, the 87-year-old one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, absolutely. So, beyond the podcast, the Milton tour, you've also got your own tour coming up, and you're doing the Fringe again, the Edinburgh Fringe. Yeah, hence the mannequins. Yeah, oh, that's what they—that's what they're for. They're for the the photo shoot, which will be coming up uh, soon. It's called Tom Horton Incomplete, mm -hmm. and it's about—it's um, about well, it's essentially over the last few years, I sort of went a bit of the wrong way with uh, partying a bit too hard, found myself in some pretty troubled times, and it's about—it's about shunning the victim narrative that I think a lot of people go for, mm -hmm. and taking responsibility for your own actions. Wow, you're becoming an adult. Yeah, it's essentially like That's that. That's scary. It's really scary. It's so really scary. But. How, uh, not to ruin the material that you're going to do at the Fringe, but what were those times, like, say, you get partying too hard? How, how hard? Pretty hard. Pretty hard. Really hard. I'm sure. 10% harder than, than, than it yeah, was yeah, before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. yeah, like a vegan penis. A vegan penis. <laughs> <laughs> Good, so that's vegan penises sorted. Tick that one off. Um... Amazing. <laughs> Love it. Right, seeing as you are coming up to the windy, wet north, we yep. thought we'd go through a little bit of Lancashire slang. Words to look out for in case anyone's trying to mug you off. Thank you. Or you don't know what's going on. I could do with this, yes. So, um, I would say the word, see what you think okay. it means. Uh, the first one is an important one, scran. I know this, scran is food. 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 Bing! Yeah. Scran right. is also a military term, so... For food? Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. So, so okay. you know, overlap. Yeah, no um, Ginnel. Ginnel? A ginnel. What do you think a ginnel is? Um, a ginnel... Um, uh, some sort of funnel. Ginnel sounds like funnel. <laughs> I don't know where like the a, logic a, is a now. I don't know. A ginnel? I don't know. I don't know what that is. Um, it's an alleyway. Oh, like a yeah. funnel? Yeah, uh, no. Like a <laughs> bit like a funnel, but yeah, sort of on funnel. the street and with walls. Yeah, funnels. A ginnel, okay. Yeah, a ginnel. Look out for ginnel. Uh, a balm. Balm? Balm. Balm? With, with an M at the end, yeah. Balm. Not like lip balm. Right, like a balm. Sort. Is that a breaded bun? Yeah, it's a roll. Is it? Like yeah, a bap? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that, that's two you've got right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, I'm those. not an idiot. Well, I mean... It's not true. Um, <clears> A balm, yeah. Yeah, um, kex. Kex? I'm going to guess that's like kegs, so I'm going to go trousers. Yes! Um, put wood in thaw. Put wood in thaw. So it's plugging up something. Does that mean shut up? No, it doesn't, but I can see why you'd think that. That would actually be a good... That, I think that would work, but it's not. Oh, Just yo, think of... Put wood in all. Sorry, ma'am. Yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> was that Geordie again? What was <laughs> that was meant to be man cute. Um, no, mm, oh, my, uh, right, uh, yeah. Put wood in a hole. Does that mean to um, to sort of complete something? No. Put wood in a hole. Does that mean think to of, get your wood, end away? Could wood, no, well, we're getting what I thought you'd say. No, it's just to shut the door. Wood. Oh, door shut the door. Hole. Okay. Put wood in a hole. Um, last one, scriking. Scriking? Yeah. She, she is so ugly, she is striking. No, striking with a K. Striking. Striking. Yeah. So it's not when someone's so ugly, it's like, whoa. No, okay. No. Striking. Does that mean you are... Uh, is, th is, that, is that a hunger strike? I was doing scran and striking there. You're putting them together. I yeah. see that, the etymology uh, going yeah, yeah. in your head. Um, you still, yeah. Striking. Um, is it... Um, Uh, Scriking, does it mean to scratch? No, it means to cry. To cry? Scriking. Scriking. Like really sort of dramatic crying. Oh, like wait, like that? Scriking, yeah. Oh. Crying, yeah. Oh, nice. Scriking. So just to sort of get the tone of the show. 
No, nice. Yeah. Okay, cool. I've got a few thing. there. Yeah, do you know what? You actually did really well. I feel like I got, might have got more of them than the Are You Posh game. So, yeah, I think you're more one of us than, yeah, than yeah. one of them, wasn't okay, there? I always knew I was a secret. Yeah, good. Um, running out of things to ask you now, Tom, actually. Ready? Yes. Ready? Yes. Proper ready? Very ready. Sweet. Um, like you said earlier that like what people have to get over with stand-up comedy is the fear of speaking to crowds, large crowds, sometimes smaller crowds. Um, obviously, in that environment, when people have had a few scoops, they're getting a little bit excited. They think they're funnier than you. Sometimes it might be right, but that's not the point. They think it's funny to shout out. What are the worst heckles that you've had? The worst heckle I've ever had was um, at a gig. It was only about 50 people in the gig in Bex Hill down south. Be Beck Hill, sorry. Yeah. Hang on, Bex Hill. Beck Hill's a comedian. Accuracy is really important. Uh, and um, the guy on before me was a local labourer who wasn't a comedian. It's his first ever gig. He brought 17 of his mates along. And he'd just printed off a load of jokes on Cicopedia. <laughs> so, and he was on before me, and he went on there and just read these horrendous jokes off a sheet. They weren't even his jokes. And he ripped the roof off it. Like, people were like, what? Loved it. He was like, carried out, I think. And then the Compa came on, did no time in between. He just went, right, and now next. <coughs> it's Tom Horton, and I came on and started going, hello. <laughs> well, hello, I'm pot. And um, the only sound I could hear in the audience was the sound of his 17 mates watching the video they'd just taken of him before me <laughs> on their phone. So, so they just rewatched the guy set before me set over my set. It's, that's not even a heckle, that's just someone not. It's, it's pretty damn bad. <laughs> yeah. And then on the Milton tour, the worst heckle I've had by far is Southampton. Right. So I was doing a bit about, um, I, was, I was doing the do you ski bit. And, do um, ski. Do ski. And this person went, I ski? I was like, oh no, hang on, you've got the wrong idea. This is a rhetorical <laughs> question. This person went, I do as well. I was like, right, so guys, calm down. I'm glad we've established yeah, that yeah, we yeah. all ski. And then this woman stood up and went, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> and I went, what was that? Who are you? That was hard to decipher a gender, let alone an accent. <laughs> and she went, that's sexist. What you just done? Yeah, you say. I was like, what? She went, yeah, you sexist, you're not going to upset it. And I said, you need to calm down, sir. <laughs> and that made her go absolutely mental. She did, she went, oh, I've got double D tits, you prick. <laughs> and it was like a Milton Jones gig. It's like a family friendly gig. And then she wouldn't show up and I went, look, okay, if, I'm if I've offended you, I'm sorry, can we just drop it? She went, no, you want it, you're going to get it. And then the audience turned on her and started going, shut up. She went, oh, I... and she was like, she was insane, and then the security had to come and... <laughs> Brilliant. That and is it's not really a well-thought-out heckle, no, is it? She then calmed down when security came, um, and she said to her husband, we're leaving, and her husband went, I'm not leaving. This is hilarious. <laughs> so she just sat there the whole show in um, absolute state. Brilliant. I've got double Ds, you prick. What a, that, is, that is a great heckle. That family-friendly show. That is a really good heckle. Yeah. Did she? I couldn't see couldn't it. See. I could just couldn't hear see. this couldn't voice. See. So she could have been lying. She could be. She might have been a bloke. Yeah, I think she was a force to be reckoned with. That's how I describe <laughs> her. <laughs> Good. Um, I heard that one of the best heckles that you've had, whether it can be described as a heckle, I don't know, was somebody just throwing up in, uh, in the audience uh, at, my, on the front my, row of you. My, in my Soho theatre run, halfway through my yeah. hour-long show, someone projectile vomited... Did it reach you? No. Were they, they aiming they, for they it? A few people. No, they were trying to. They were trying to keep it secret, but you can't <laughs> you really can't do that with vomit because no. the place stinks as yeah. well. Yeah. And then I'd sort of go, because you're hearing, blah, blah. He's like, Madam, <laughs> are you okay? What's happening down here? And their friend's like, it's fine. I was like, it's not fine. What's happening? And they're like, oh, she's being sick. It's like, right. I can't just do you know, carry on. <laughs> no, no. carrying on. Wait, there's vomit. It needs to be cleaned up. Yeah. So they then left outside, and someone came in with a mop and mopped it up. And I was sort of going, "Look, I'm so sorry. If this was my fault, and my jokes, <laughs> I apologise." Then we cleaned it up, and I carried on. And then they came back in, not with her, but her friends came back in, and sat down. 
I went, oh, I hope she's okay. And she went, why did you have to make a scene like that? I was like, what do you mean? She went, why did you have to draw attention to her? I think vomiting. Oh, yeah, it's my might fault, is it? Is it my fault that your friend projectile vomited everywhere? And they, they had a go at me. To be fair, it was your fault. Was you think fault. so? To be fair, that would be, could become like your thing, couldn't it? Tom Horton, the man who makes you vomit. Yeah. To put See that if on you the can stomach. See if you can stomach the Tom Horton. The polite posh boy doing... Yeah. Good. Right. And on that note, if you want somebody to make you... Which camera am I looking at here? If you want somebody to make you vomit and you don't mind the smell, I don't know, well, how horrible can I be? Go for it. Just that then. No. If you do want somebody to make you vomit, to make you laugh, and to talk about being posh, and what else do you do? What, what else? else do well, do? <laughs> variety of different subjects. Variety of different subjects. In, the, then... in, in, my, in my new show, I talk about my sister being a goth. Is that just the poshest tick I've ever seen? Oh, I was counting them. Oh, right. Okay. My sister being pof, posh and being into Wiccan. I talk about running away from home as a kid. You ran away from home? Yeah, I did when I was younger. But what I, happened? It was, on, a, it was in the, on an army barracks in Northern Ireland. So we couldn't leave because of the IRA and stuff. During the Troubles? Yeah, yeah. You ran away from home during the Troubles? I tried to. But I'd only ever, I'd only ever seen running away in like Enid Blyton books. <laughs> so when I ran away... My plan is I, I made myself eight peanut butter sandwiches. Good, yeah. And got a napkin, like a tea towel, and yeah. tied it to a stick. I did a, I did a glass of water. <laughs> and then tried to run away from the army barracks into IRA territory. Good, good. Do you know I asked you earlier on in this show, what is wrong with you? What is the matter? And why are you a stand-up comedian? Yeah. I'm glad we started out with that question. Yeah. And we really got to the bottom of it. Yeah. That is... I've lived a life, mate. Yeah. So you ran, you ran away from the army barracks during the Troubles. Well, I, did, I didn't get out the main gate because obviously the, the, the soldiers who were on... <laughs> you were no match. ...on duty, Presumably. central duty, they just saw... They were there looking out for bombs and stuff and then they just see this nine-year-old <laughs> boss's son with a little picnic on a stick walking down... What? How did your dad feel about that? Well, how, I mean, how would you reprimand somebody for that? What did he say to you? No, they didn't. I just got back <laughs> home and mum went, oh, you're back, are you? I was, Shut up, mum. You know when you run away, your parents... Peanut butter didn't last. You know, yeah, pretty much. I just, I sat, ate all the sandwiches, drank the drink, got bored yeah. and went back home. Okay. And it was all because my sister had overwritten, like, a, get a computer game on a memory card. <laughs> to be fair, you know she is a bit like that, isn't she? Yeah, my sister... She's definitely like that. Mate, you know, yeah, you know what she's like. Yeah, absolutely. Awful. Right, so what else in the upcoming tour? What are the other topics, other things, the other, the other scars that you're going to lay bare? Uh, I'm going to do some new material in the first section, which is going to involve um, my mum and her hobby of taxidermy. Nice. Which I always think is a bit weird. Taxidermy. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. it, it's like you get a corpse of an animal mm. and you stuff it to make it look like it's always staring at you. How, how do, I wonder how you get, how do you get into that? Like, there's like, like a gateway taxidermy. I don't know, I just like, my mum it? collects roadkill. Nice, but you can't, you can't pick up your own roadkill, according to the highway code. She doesn't so make she, it. Oh. She, no, she's not like driving down the A66, like looking for a mole for the Chesterfield. Bang! Yeah. It's mounting curves. That's ruined it for me, actually. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a lot better. That's, um, the, the words that we've got in our kitchen, we've got um, a squirrel that she's stuffed. And she's put it in an action man canoe. <laughs> it's in our kitchen, on it. It's in a canoe. It's got a little paddle. <laughs> and then when people come in, they go, "What's that?" And she goes, oh, it's, "It's how he died." <laughs> Is it actually how he died? Yeah. Okay. Just trying to keep his nuts dry. <laughs> oh, <mom. laughs> oh no, you're a professional. You're a I've professional. Heard you. it's oh, that's like you, you, you stole it as well. That's yeah. Yeah. Good. Were they like your toys growing up? Then did she give you like? Dead no, badges it's just to play like you with walk into the like... kitchen and we've just got all these animals. It looks like like, like a Disney princess's entourage all doing the mannequin challenge. <laughs> There's like a stoat doing the plank. All sorts of stuff. What a household. What a household. It's nuts. Yeah, I can't wait to come and visit you in the Tower of London. Yeah, do. Do. Yeah, absolutely. I will. Do. Everyone heard that. That's live. He heard it. Very well. No, you can't come, Carolina. Right, I think that's all that we've got time for. Tom's got a shoot-off because he is doing a gig in Liverpool at the Hot Water Comedy Club, yeah. opening there, and then you're zooming back over to Manchester 
And yeah. where, where are you playing in Manchester? Wormhole. Tonight at the Wormhole. Yeah. Um, go watch him. I mean, Thanks. this is pre-recorded, so you would have missed it. But nonetheless, come to Salford. Come to Salford. Please. Come to the Lowry. Listen to the podcast. Um, you can't miss it. He is a lovely, lovely bloke. He will make you laugh. Like I said, he's making posh funny. He is the funniest bloke going, and he is absolutely cracking. Thank you. So it's been an absolute pleasure to have you, you Tom. Uh, I really look forward to the free tickets, both to Milton Jones <laughs> and to your tour in June. Sure. Um, and as expected, Tom is going to sing us out. Bye. Bye, everyone. I can't be here no more, so I'll see you next at my Salford tour.